The Voyager space program is one of the longest-running space missions NASA conducts. It has been more than 40 years since Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 left Earth to travel billions of kilometers into outer space. Voyagers 1 and 2 were launched in 1977, have remained functional, and continue to send back data that has propelled our understanding of the universe to unimaginable heights. These spacecraft, designed using blueprints and low-level technology by today's standards, are a wonder of technology and are one of NASA scientists' crowning achievements. Over the past 40 years, both spacecraft have beamed back a continuous stream of data. But after this latest unexpected mission, it is time for them to retire. Stick with us as we explain why the Voyager probe is shutting down. NASA launched the Voyager 2 probe on August 20, 1977 from Space Launch Complex 41 in Cape Canaveral, Florida. Two weeks later, the twin Voyager 1 probe was launched on September 5, 1977. Voyager 1 is currently about 14.5 billion miles away from Earth, making it the furthest man-made object from our planet. But there seems to be a problem. Scientists have recently been troubled by some strange data coming back from the Voyager 1 probe. While Voyager 1 is still operating and sending back data, scientists on the mission recently noticed that it appeared confused about its location in space. The problem stems from the Attitude Articulation and Control System, or AACS, on Voyager 1, which keeps the spacecraft and its antenna correctly aligned. And the AACS appears to be operational, as the spacecraft is receiving commands, acting on them, and transmitting scientific data to Earth. Despite this, the AACS is providing some very strange telemetry data to the spacecraft's operators. A mystery like this is sort of par for the course at this stage of the Voyager mission. Suzanne Dodd, project manager for Voyager 1 at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California, said in a statement, Voyager 2, on the other hand, is showing no signs of decay and is still working better than could have been anticipated at this stage in its journey to the edge and beyond. In the early space age, it was discovered that a periodic alignment of the planets in our solar system would occur in the late 1970s. This alignment would provide a unique moment in time so a single probe could explore Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune by taking advantage of natural gravitational pull. NASA began to work on an exploratory mission which evolved into a massive project involving two groups of two probes each, with one group visiting Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto, and the other Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune. But, as costs spiraled to over $1 billion by 1972, the mission was scaled back and replaced with two Mariner program-derived spacecraft, originally named Mariner Jupiter Saturn probes, but renamed to the iconic Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. Constructed by the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, or JPL, they include 16 hydrazine thrusters, three axis stabilization gyroscopes, and 11 scientific instruments to study celestial objects as they travel through space. For communication purposes, there is a large 3.7-meter parabolic high-gain antenna to transceive data via the deep space network on Earth. But what about the power? Where will we find the energy required to power a spacecraft for four decades? Both probes are equipped with three multi-hundred watt radioisotope thermoelectric generators. Each RTG includes 24 pressed plutonium oxide spheres and provides enough heat to generate approximately 157 watts of electrical power at launch. Collectively, the RTGs supplied the spacecraft with 470 watts at launch, halving every 87.7 years. They were predicted to allow operations to continue until at least 2020. Their power is remarkably still going, but not for long. The two probes traveled the same route four months apart, separating once they had visited their last planet. The first stop was Jupiter, passing 570,000 kilometers above the planet's cloud mountains, returning images of Jupiter as well as its moons Amaltea, Io, Castillo, Ganymede, and Europa. Voyager 1's four-month earlier visit had suggested active volcanoes on the moon Io, and during a 10-hour volcano watch, Voyager 2 confirmed Voyager 1's observations of active volcanism on the surface of the moon. Two new small moons, Adrastea and Metis, were found orbiting just outside the ring. Then a third, Thebe, was discovered between the orbits of Amalthea and Io. Following a course correction two hours after its closest approach to Jupiter, Voyager 2 sped to Saturn. 
Its encounter with the sixth planet began in 1981, two years after leaving the Jovian system with images of the moon Iapetus. Once again, Voyager 2 repeated the photographic mission of its predecessor, although it actually flew about 14,290 miles closer to Saturn. Since its visit, we now believe Saturn's rings are pieces of comets, asteroids, or shattered moons that broke up before they reached the planet, torn apart by Saturn's powerful gravity. They are made of billions of small chunks of ice and rock coated with other materials such as dust. Voyager 2's data suggested that Saturn's ring was perhaps only about 980 feet thick. During the encounter, Voyager 2 also photographed Saturn's moon Hyperion, known as the Hamburger Moon because of its shape. Saturn is estimated to have 82 moons, but only 29 are named, and the Voyagers helped with the discovery of Helene, Telesto, and Calypso. The Voyager spacecraft fulfilled their original assignments within the first five years, and mission planners then directed the veteran spacecraft to opposite sides of the galaxy. In January 1986, NASA's Voyager 2 became the first and so far the only spacecraft to explore Uranus, the second to last stop on its journey through the outer solar system. At the time of the Voyager encounter, Uranus had five known moons and a set of dark rings first observed the year the spacecraft left Earth. Astronomers had named the moons in order of distance from the planet, Miranda, Ariel, Umbriel, Titania, and Oberon, after characters and works by William Shakespeare and Alexander Pope. Because of Uranus's great distance from the Sun, engineers made changes to Voyager's imaging techniques to accommodate light levels of only 25% of what they were during the Saturn encounter. On December 30th, Voyager 2 discovered its first new moon, eventually named Puck, orbiting closer to Uranus than Miranda. In the summer of 1989, NASA's Voyager 2 became the first spacecraft to observe the planet Neptune, its final planetary target. Passing about 4,950 kilometers above Neptune's North Pole, it was Voyager 2's closest approach to any planet since leaving Earth. Five hours later, Voyager 2 passed about 40,000 kilometers from Neptune's largest moon, Triton, the last solid body the spacecraft would have an opportunity to study. Wrapped in teal and cobalt-colored bands of clouds, Voyager 2 revealed that Neptune looked like a blue-hued sibling to Jupiter and Saturn, the blue indicating the presence of methane. A massive slate-colored storm was dubbed the Great Dark Spot, similar to Jupiter's Great Red Spot, six new moons and four rings were also discovered. During the encounter, the engineering team carefully changed the probe's direction and speed so that it could do a close flyby of the planet's largest moon, Triton. The flyby showed evidence of geologically young surfaces and active geysers spewing material skyward. This indicated the Triton was not simply a solid ball of ice, even though it had the lowest surface temperature of any natural body observed by Voyager minus 391 degrees Fahrenheit. Following its reconnaissance of Neptune, Voyager 2 began its interstellar mission extension that continues to this day, more than 44 years after the hardy craft left Earth. Over the years, engineers have turned off several of Voyager 2's instruments to conserve power, beginning with the imaging system in 1989. But the spacecraft continues to return data about cosmic rays and the solar wind even now. On November 5, 2018, Voyager 2 crossed the heliopause, which is the boundary between the heliosphere, the bubble-like region of space created by the Sun, and the interstellar medium leading to the rest of the Milky Way. Even though it is likely that scientific data will not be collected after 2025, engineering data could theoretically be sent back for many more years. Depending on how much power they still have to send a signal back to Earth, the two Voyager spacecraft could stay within range of the deep space network until about 2036. And just in case it may one day be found by an alien intelligence, Voyager 2 and its twin carry a gold-plated record that contains information about its home planet, including recordings of terrestrial sounds and music and greetings in 55 languages. Instructions on how to play the record are also included. Thank you very much for watching until now. Your reward is an Easter egg. We truly appreciate your views. They mean more than you could know. As a thank you, we will be giving away a $100 Amazon voucher each week until the end of July to thank you for supporting our channel. All you need to do is like this video, subscribe, and leave us a comment below and we will pick out a winner each week.